Another piece of criticism or by way of question is how is assembly theory or maybe assembly index different from Kolmogorov complexity? So for people who don't know, Kolmogorov complexity of an object is the length of a shortest computer program that produces the object as output. Yeah, I, I, I seem to, there seems to be a disconnect between the computational approach. To this. So yeah, so a Kolmogorov measure requires a Turing machine, mm -hmm. requires a computer. Um, and that's one thing. And the other thing is, um, assembly theory is supposed to trace the process by which life evolution emerged. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a main thing there. There are lots of other layers. So, so Kolmogorov complexity, you can you can approximate Kolmogorov complexity, but it's not really telling you very much about the actual. Um, it, it's really telling you about like your data, your data set compression of your data set. Sure. And so that doesn't really help you identify the the turtle in this case is the computer. Mm -hmm. And so what assembly theory does is I I'm going to say <laughs> it's a trigger warning for anyone listening is uh, uh, who loves complexity theory. I think that we're going to show that AIT is a very important subset of assembly theory because here's what happens that um, I think that it, assembly theory allows us to build. Um, go understand when we're selections occurring. Selection produces um, factories and things. Factories in the end produce computers and you can go, then algorithmic information theory comes out of that. The frustration I've had with, with looking at life through this kind of information theory is it doesn't take into account causation. So the main difference between yeah. assembly theory and all these complexity measures is there's no causal chain. Yeah. In, and, and I think that's the main. As the causal chain is at the at the at the core of uh, assembly theory. Exactly, and if you're in, if you've got all your data in a computer memory, all the data is the same. You can access it in the same time way. There's you don't care. You just compress it, and and uh, you either look at the program runtime mm -hmm. or the shortest program. And that for me, it can it, it is absolutely not capturing what it is what its selection does. But, but assembly theory looks at objects, it doesn't have information about the object history. It's going to try to infer that history by uh, looking for the shortest history, right? Like so, the object the object doesn't like uh, have a, a Wikipedia page that goes with it oh, about I would, its history. I would say it does in a way, and it is fascinating to look at. So you've just got the object. Mm -hmm and you have no other information about the object, what assembly theory allows you to do with just with the object is to, and the, and the, the word infer is correct, I agree, infer. So you like say, well, that's not the, that's not the history, but, but something really interesting comes from this. The shortest path is inferred from the object. Mm -hmm. That is the worst case scenario if you have no machine to make it. So that tells you about the depth of that object in time. Mm -hmm. And so what assembly theory allows you to do is without considering any other circumstances to say from this object, how deep is this object in time if um, we just treat the object as itself without any other, mm -hmm. any other constraints. And that's super powerful because the shortest path then says, allows you to say, oh, this object wasn't just created randomly, there was a process. And so assembly theory is not meant to, you know, one up AIT or to ignore the factory is just to say it's just to say hey there was a factory mm -hmm. that and how but, big was that factory and how deep in time is it mm -hmm. but it's still computationally very difficult to compute uh, that history right for complex objects like we, it, it, it is it becomes harder but one of the things that's super nice is that um, it constrains your initial conditions, right? Sure. It constrains where you're going to be. So if you take, say, imagine, so one of the things we're doing right now is applying assembly theory to drug discovery. Mm -hmm. Now, what everyone's doing right now is taking all the proteins and looking at the proteins and, and looking at molecules docked with proteins. Why not instead take the look at the molecules that are involved in interacting with the receptors over time, mm -hmm. rather than thinking about, and use the molecules evolve over time as a proxy for how the proteins evolved over time, mm -hmm. and then use that to constrain 
your drug discovery process. You flip the problem 180 and focus on the molecule evolution mm -hmm. rather than the protein. And so you can guess in the future what might happen. So that so that so you rather than having to consider all possible molecules, you know where to focus. And that's the same thing if you're looking at in assembly spaces for an like, object where you don't know the entire history, but you know that um, you know in the history of this object, it's not going to have some other motif that there that um, it doesn't apply, it doesn't appear in the past. But just even for the drug discovery point you made, isn't don't you have to simulate all of chemistry for? uh to figure out how to come up with cons constraints no on the molecules and the no i mean i don't i don't know enough about protein well me. this is another thing that i think causes because this paper goes across so many boundaries so yeah. chemists have looked at this and said um this is not a this is not a react this is not correct reaction it's like no it's a graph <laughs> <laughs> sure there's there's a uh assembly index and shortest path examples here on chemistry yeah and so, and what you do is you look at the minimal constraints on that graph. Of course, it has some mapping to the synthesis, but actually, you don't have to know all of chemistry. You just have to understand. You can build up the constraint space rather nicely. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just at the beginning, right? There are so many directions this could go in, and as I said, it it could all be wrong, but mm -hmm. hopefully, it's less wrong. 